So tuberculosis, we're going to talk about tuberculosis and then we're going to talk about uh, lung abscess right after that. But tuberculosis, this is a lung infection from inhalation of aerosolized TB. The bacteria becomes aerosolized and it's going to travel down. You're going to inhale it, it travels down into the alveoli and then it causes infection. So the way it causes infection is first you get a primary TB. Okay, So it goes all the way down to the alveoli and it settles in the lower lobe goes all the way down into the lower lobe and it's going to cause a focal caseating necrosis. This is called a Gohn complex. So you can see here there's a focal caseating necrosis. Remember there's different types of necrosis. There's liquefactive necrosis, coagulate, co co coagulative necrosis, and you have this caseating like cheese-like necrosis. So that's what you get in the primary TB. And the other thing is you get an ipsilateral hyalur lymphadenopathy. So you get lymphadenopathy. Note in this picture there's bilateral so ignore this is there, and if you see ipsilateral lymph adenopathy with the gone focus, that's a primary TB. That's the characteristic of primary TB. Again, this is normal. There's no, there's no. This is the lymph nodes here, and you see the lymph nodes here. There's definitely some adenopathy. There's definitely enlargement. Next is this gone focus. This caseating necrosis gets walled off. Our body, our body works well, has nice defense systems, and it walls off that caseating necrosis. And now you have a dormant primary TB. So your TB has gone dormant. It's still in your lungs. You're still going to get a positive PPD test. If they tested you and you had primary TB that got walled off, you'd still become positive. But you're not going to have any symptoms. You're going to have minimal to no symptoms because it's walled off and it's going to be just dormant. However, if you can get secondary TB if you reactivate this dormant TB, and usually it's because of a poor immune system. Remember I said it's the immune system that's keeping it in check. But if you have a poor immune system, for example, you have HIV or you're using immunosuppressive drugs, you're going to get reactivation of this TB, of this dormant TB, and it's going to mess you up. It's going to go up to the upper lungs. And it's going to cause the caches and liquefactive necrosis. You can see here, dormant, now it's reactivated in the upper lungs. Now, the, the symptoms you see here are going to be very classic. You're going to see fevers, night sweats, weight loss, cough. Very classic for TB, especially this night sweats, weight loss. You're going to, every time you ever suspect TB, you always ask that. Fevers, night sweats, weight loss, and if you have cough, especially if you have a hemoptysis because this, this, you can get erosion into the pulmonary vessels. You see all this infection can erode into the pulmonary vessels and cause bleeding, and then bleeding is going to come out when you cough it up. That's hemoptysis. Okay. And then if you biopsy this infection, you're going to get you're going to see casein and granulomas. And then if you do this acid fast bacilli stain, you're basically looking for acid fast bacilli. If it's positive, that's TB. Because T Mycobacterium tuberculosis is an acid fast bacilli. So very easy. Acid fast bacilli, that's another one to know. Okay. Now, if this TB spreads hematogenously, it can lead to some big problems. You can get mill. I think I spelled this wrong. This miliary TB where it just pretty much dots all the lung, miliary pulmonary TB, or it can go systemic. It can hit up, hit the brain causing meningitis. It can hit the lymph nodes. Okay, so that's TB. Again, I just want to summarize this. Primary TB, you have a gone complex. Gone complex is either is both a gone focus plus ipsilateral hyalur lymphadenopathy. That's a primary TB. Primary TB gets walled off thanks to our immune system, becomes dormant, you don't have symptoms. But when you, you get poor immune system, it gets reactivated and you get lots of symptoms. It goes to remember, remember the going focus at first lower lobe, reactivation in the upper lobe. Okay, and then you're gonna get symptoms. What symptoms were the key symptoms? Fevers, night sweats, weight loss, cough. That's TB. And again, you, this is aerosolized, so when they're coughing, they're just spreading all that TB. So that's why we need those those TB masks, those N95 masks, so that you don't get you don't inhale that aerosolized TB. Finally, that what test was it that was positive? Acid fast bacilli, positive acid fast bacilli stain, positive for TB. Now we go on to the lung abscess. And abscess is, I mean, same as always, abscess is a collection, localized collection of pus. In this case, it's within the parenchyma of the lung. Okay, so remember, pus is just all the dead, dead neutrophils, dead, ex, dead inflammatory infiltrates, some dead bacteria, okay? And also maybe some alive bacteria too. 
And this arises from aspiration of stomach contents or obstruction of bronchi. But that's the bigger, this bigger one is aspiration of stomach contents. And remember, remember what I said, remember I talked about the anatomy? Where do aspirated contents more likely go? Which side of the lung do they more likely go to? The left side or the right side? Remember that aspirated contents most, most usually go to the right side of the lung thanks to the bronchi anatomy. And then what you're going to see on in clinical features, first it looks like a slowly progressing pneumonia. So what does a pneumonia look like? It's a, you get infectious symptoms, fever, malaise. You get some respiratory symptoms, shortness of breath. You get cough with sputum. And then the other thing is when you do an x-ray, let's change your color here, you're going to see an air fluid level. Okay, See that, that flat line? That's the air fluid level. Because guess what? Fluid likes to settle down. It makes it like little little flat. So you have a collection. It's walled off. And you have this all this pus. And it's going to, this fluid, this pus is going to settle down. And you're going to see this. You're going to see that. That's what you're seeing. This air here. So that's the air, the dark is the air, and the gray is this fluid that you're seeing. And then you see a level. Uh, you see a, the change between the air and the fluid, and it's a flat line. And that's an abscess. Okay. How do you treat this? You give them antibiotics. It's an infection-mediated thing, so you give them antibiotics. Now I want to go back a little bit. I want to talk about, so often the most biggest cause is aspiration of stomach contents. So the bacteria and this abscess, again, this is this bacteria here, this is, that's why it's a problem. The bacteria here is usually a mix of anaerobes that's normally found in your mouth. Okay, so it's not going to be like the ones we saw in pneumonia, like strep, or staph aureus, or klebsiella. These are going to be some weird sounding ones, like bacterio bacteriorides. I don't even know how to say it. Fusobacterium. I bet you've never heard of these unless you learn about this. Or pepto streptococcus. I don't think you have to memorize this, but streptococcus. But if you see this, I mean, first of all, it's not going to be one bacteria. Second of all, it's going to be this weird sounding stuff that's normally in your mouth, but we never learn about it because they're just, they're normal. They're just hanging out in your mouth and they're not causing any problems. But if you aspirate them, they're going to be this new environment in the lungs. And they're going to cause infection and they're going to cause localized collection of pus and that's a lung abscess. Okay, so that's it. And again, you treat them with antibiotics and that's it for our lung abscess and our TB lecture.